people who have sought another aspect of the religion which in fact is not really sanctioned by the Prophet Muhammad himself. They have sought what they what may be called a shortcut to God. And this shortcut uh, involves the continuous repetition of God's names and his attributes in fashions which are not in accordance with the Sunnah of the Prophet Muhammad. And this is what put such circles and such uh, beliefs into a state of deviation. They will deviate from the true teachings of Islam. So we can say in general, because again, Sufism is something which is difficult to pin down in uh, a few words, because you may say Sufis do this, and then one Sufi will come and say, well, I don't do this. You know, my brand of Sufism doesn't do this. You know, you have, you know, just like Christianity, you know, you may find also, you may say, Christians believe that there are three gods in one. Then the Jehovah's Witness will come and say, huh, I'm a Christian, but I don't believe there are three gods in one. You see, you will find people, and of course in, in, um, in Philippines, you have the uh, Iglesia Ni Cristo, who say there's only one God. We don't believe in even two. Jesus wasn't a God, he was a prophet. And they consider themselves to be Christians. So we can already talk in the general sense. You know, as I said, in the general sense, this is the Sufi thought is that what they call mystical thought. And it's based on what they, what we may call a shortcut to God. They believe in the reunification of the human soul with what they call the divine soul. And this philosophical concept, in fact, is alien to Islam. It's not a part of Islam. And the practices which they do to try to achieve this goal are also outside of the uh, teachings of Islam. Assalamu uh, alaikum. Could you please explain the term destination of a man? Is it planned by the man himself or is Allah who causes the life and death as stated in the Quran? Again, this is a big topic, right? And uh, I'm sure I'm not going to be able to do justice, you know, in a few words. But uh, since the question is raised, you know, we can say uh, briefly that we believe, as a Muslim, in destiny. This is one of the pillars of what is called the pillars of faith. The last pillar is the Prophet ﷺ said referred to as Qadr. Qadr, which is translated as destiny. Whether the good of it or the evil of it, we are required to believe in it. That everything has already been written. And the Prophet ﷺ had said that before God created the universe, 50,000 years prior to that, everything was recorded that was and would be. So there is no doubt about it. The issue that comes up for us is whether this recording of things means that it makes us do what we are doing. The fact that it is already recorded what we are going to do, does it mean that it forces us to do it? You see, this is where the confusion lies in people's minds. The fact that it's already written, it means you have no choice. No, it doesn't mean you don't have a choice. It just means that your choice was already known. So, there is no contradiction for us. Because when we say God is all-knowing, it means He knows all. All that was and would be. And He has recorded this. is only an expression of His all-knowingness. But He has given us the ability to choose. And this is something that we all feel and experience. We choose to do things. So we are not forced to do what we do. And this is why we are judged. Because if we were forced to do what we, we did, then the judgment would become meaningless. If it were that Allah created us and made us do good, and then rewarded us for the good, created us and made us do evil, and punished us for the evil, then 
this would be meaningless. This would make this life an exercise in futility. But in fact, Allah has given us a choice between good and evil, and we are judged according to that choice. However, when a person makes a choice to do evil, there he cannot guarantee that that choice will in fact take place. A person may plan to go and rob a store. But when he steps out of the house, he slips and breaks his ankle. And they have to take him to the hospital and they, he ends up in the hospital. He wasn't able to go and rob the store. This is why Allah will judge him according to his intent. Because a person may intend good and the end results may appear to people to be evil. And Allah judges according to that intent. Because it's His will as to whether one's intent comes into practice or it doesn't. So. Well, I've got a shortage of time, but still the question is there. Uh, do Muslims worship Muhammad Wasallam? If not, who is he? Muslims do not worship Muhammad Wasallam. To worship Muhammad Wasallam is to leave the fold of Islam. So when I say Muslims, I'm saying true Muslims. Because you may go into some parts of the Muslim world and find some Muslims praying to Prophet Muhammad Wasallam. You may find this. But this takes them outside of the bounds of Islam. Because Islam prohibits the worship of other than God. Muhammad وسلم, was the last prophet of God sent to mankind. He brought with him a book of revelation which was revealed to him known as the Quran and he put the teachings of the Quran into practice and that practice is referred to as his sunnah or the way of the prophet. Well, this is the last question. Uh, Mr. Phillips, please explain what is meant by holy war and what is the meaning of jihad? Well, jihad is typically translated as holy war, you know, uh, by the uh, Western media or, you know, Orientalists from the past. Islam, Islamic jihad is referred to as a holy war. And this has been used to present Islam as being spread by the sword. That Muslims were riding across the desert on camels and horses with a Quran in one hand and a sword in the other, you know. Either you accept this Quran or off goes your head. Right? This is the typical picture which is presented of the spread of Islam. However, in fact, we find that most people who are Muslims in this world never saw a Muslim soldier. Islam spread to uh, Indonesia, which is supposed to be the largest Muslim country in terms of population. And no soldiers ever went there, Muslim soldiers. So we know, practically speaking, that Islam was not spread by the sword. And when the term jihad is used in an Islamic context, this is used in reference to one's sacrifice for the sake of God. Whenever one sacrifices his wealth or anything which belongs to him for the sake of God, this is referred to in Islam as jihad. Now the greatest thing that one can sacrifice 